Hi everybody, it's only me. I'm just going to do a quick um, overview of all the books I read in October. Most of them were ebooks. There are a few paperbacks in there, one hardback I think, yeah. But most of them were actually ebooks, so you'll have to be generous while I'm doing it. But the first book I read was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune, which tells the story of uh, Wallace who has a heart attack and dies. Um, uh, Reaper collects him, takes him to this sort of coffee shop cafe or tea shop uh, where he has to make the decision when he's ready to cross over into the next world. However, he goes close to the person who runs the sort of thing, Hugo. Um, and becomes friendly with the, the resident ghost, which is Hugo's grandfather, I think. Um, so he's given a week, um, eventually, that he's got to make a decision, he's got to sort everything out, past the other side. Um, he has to create a life uh, within those seven days. It's actually a really lovely story, and um, I really love TJ Clune, so I gave this one five out of five stars. The second book I read was an ebook and it was called The Borrow Bookshop Holiday and it's by Kylie Dunbar. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah. So basically this tells the story of a girl who uh, named Jude. She's just graduated uni. She was going out with uh, one of the uh, associate professors, Naughty Naughty, um, but it seems to make a, a job of this with various people. She finds him with another girl, the first year, and so she decides enough is enough. They previously had booked a holiday um, where you pay to run a bookshop for a week because she loves books, decides to go on her own. However, because they're usually two people holidays, um, the guy that lets the uh, bookshop out calls somebody else who was waiting for a solo trip and uh, asks him to go along as well. So she's not very happy when she meets this guy but you know what's going to happen, they're going to fall in love and all that good stuff and have fun and trials and tribulations running this bookshop in a lovely Cornish village. So that one had four stars. The next one was another ebook and it was called Summer at Last Chance Bookshop by Eve Edwards. So this one tells the story of uh, this girl named Merle. She's escaping from her past. Um, basically she's pretty much homeless and she couch surfaces until one day she turns up on this uh, bookshelf stop, but look, bookshop doorstep in the West End. It's a theatre bookshop. Um, basically she's trying to resolve things in her past and they, the bookshop and one of its owners has something to do with that past but they don't recognise her because she's changed her hair and she was only a child when they saw her last. Um, so she, they take her in, they give her a job, find her somewhere to live. So she helps out. She's really good. She helps bookshop by setting up decent, like a children's section. Um, and things like um, gifts um, relating to the productions that are on in the West End, such as like, like Harry Potter and stuff like that. Um, and she meets a, a nice guy who was writing a book about this author that her father worked for and she lived with, and this is the crux of the whole story. And she has to come to terms with it, and she believes that she was responsible for this guy's death, this author's death, who's very well respected. Um, I thought it was a very good book, and again, I gave it four stars. The next three books are all ebooks as well, and they're by Andrew Cunningham, and they're the Yester Time series, which is Yester Time, the Yester Time Effect, and the Yester Time Warning. Basically, it was the tagline that got me on this one. The tagline, this, this is the cover of the first one, was something like, um, I'm going to die in 1878, 100 years before I was born. And I thought, wow, that sounds interesting. So I downloaded it and I, I thought it was really good. So basically what happens, this guy is visiting a friend who's about to pass away from cancer and he does and he's cremated. And on his way back, um, the guy's going to scatter his ashes in the desert because that's what this guy wanted. He stumbles across an old ghost town and he, th and he ends up scattering the ashes there because he thinks, why not? Um, during a storm, he stumbles into a cave for shelter and in that cave, he finds a trunk. In that trunk, he finds the note that says, I'm going to die 100 years before I was born uh, and, and so on and he thinks it's a bit odd and then he finds things that are pertinent to 1878 there's newspaper clippings there's clothing there's coins but at the bottom in a little bag he finds a digital camera and thinks this whole thing is a joke however he then goes and looks at the photos on this digital camera um, the camera's degraded the batteries have leaked but the memory cards are safe 
outside of the camera and they're fine and what he does is um, he looks at the photos and he recognises people from the from his time period or his past that disappeared so an actress from 2003 or 2009 or something a writer from the 1920s um, but he still thinks well this could be photoshopped until he comes across a photo that possibly that could no way be photoshopped and that is a photograph of his great-grandfather that was very fascinating. So this tells the story of there are these time portals that appear around the world and um, they only go in one direction and the one he's found goes back to 1878 so which is where uh, this these people are and they are trapped there they don't know how to go and he finds out that there was a group of people in his future that were using these portals to try and stop the world from becoming even more of a mess than it is now and that is the story of these three books basically in the first one he goes back and he meets this actress from the 2000s uh, that is stuck there and they find other portals and they jump around the the timeline trying to get back to the 2020s so which they do again in the final book but that basically is the the three stories of them trying to jump around and um, having adventures in various time periods so they were really good um so i gave yes a time five stars uh, yes time effect four and yes time warning four that they were really really good and the next book again another ebook was called the haunting of sunshine house by dominique best now picture on there's a bit of a not a what sunshine house would look like so basically this takes place, takes place in los angeles sunshine house is a retirement home for old people so they got their own little apartment buildings now this is actually based on a real location and they do use real names on it the real locations name is the Knickerbocker Hotel now they call it something else the I can't read my writing um, but it, it, they call it something else uh, a famous it's a famous hotel in Los Angeles where various people stayed famous people like Elvis Presley was there Marilyn was there Joe DiMaggio um, and they actually mentioned these people and it is true uh, one of the thing they mentioned was uh, the suicide of a woman named Irene uh, Irene was a costume designer at one of the studios and she did commit suicide by jumping out of the window um, who else was mentioned I'm trying to think oh I think was it Orson Welles or W.D. Griffiths Griffiths I think who allegedly died in the lobby but a lot of people famously stayed there and they do mention that throughout Houdini's wife had seances on the roof trying to contact Houdini after his death and so on but this is about um the uh, the residents they are dying off one by one somebody is killing them off um they think that it's a ghost killing them off because it sounds like it but they're not sure and then, so they call in a paranormal investigative, investigative team, including a medium who can see and speak to ghosts, to come in and investigate. And they do, um, but it turns out that it's not ghosts killing them. Obviously, there are ghosts there. We know there are ghosts there, like, like Irene is there and so on. But it's not those ghosts this is somebody real life who has is a serial killer they've killed elderly people in other places before and this is how they track it down and solve the mystery it was really good and i gave it four stars then after that one i read terry pratchett's the carpet people this one was uh, given to me by somebody on uh, one of the terry pratchett's groups they were given away a few books and I asked for this one which I've never read he wrote this when he was 19 and then he re rewrote it as an older man so it's a bit both um so this is the story of little people who live in the carpet um <laughs> there are some funny bits in there that are just classic um Pratchett that I can't think of offhand now but like something to do with chair legs um, the varnish from the chair legs uh, and stuff like that uh, very very good there's a thing called the fray that's wiping out um, the villages of these people that live in the carpet and it's how they can stop it and um, yes you know how you know how who writes a story of empires in a carpet with good guys bad guys and people that can see the future but they see all different futures that could happen I mean come on that is such a good you know the story of Frey sweeping a trail of destruction across the carpet. 
I mean, it's, it's a must, it's a must. Now, I gave this three stars because it's obviously not up to the Disquilled standards because it's such an early novel, but it will be taking its place in my permanent Pratchett collection. Um, another book I read this month was Florence Lawrence, The Biograph Girl by Kelly R. Brown. This uh, tagline is America's first movie star. So Florence Lawrence was a movie star in the very, very early days of um, the motion picture industry. Before it even moved to Hollywood, she was uh, film, She filmed in New York. She did film in Hollywood later on, but this is when the, the studios were based in uh, New York before they moved out to uh, Los Angeles. Um, she was called the first movie star because she was working for the Biograph Company and she left there and they worked out this big publicity campaign where she disappeared. It was reported that she'd been killed by tram and then Imp um, Productions came up and said, no, no, she's not dead. She's with us. Her name's Florence Lawrence. This is Florence Lawrence. She is with us now and she's going to be making moving pictures for us and so that's how she became known as America's first movie star because she was allegedly the first one mentioned by name. Prior to that they were all known as the Biograph Girl, the Imp Girl, the, the Lasky Girl, the, the Girl with the Ringlets and so on. They didn't have names. Um, it's very sad she ended up committing suicide in 1938. Um, she made a heck of a lot of films and this is a great one to be added to my old Hollywood library. Then we read, finally I finished The Hollywood Book of Death by um, somebody, James Robert Parrish. So this just takes a brief overview on the lives and deaths of various stars in the entertainment industry, particularly Hollywood. Um, it's set out into sections such as, let's have a look, we've got Hang on. Uh, accidental deaths, alcohol and drugs, in obscurity, murders, natural causes, puzzling deaths, suicides. But, doesn't have Jean Harlow, or Paul Byrne, for that matter, I don't think. Doesn't have Jean Harlow, which I was surprised, and has people I've never heard of. But hey, it was very, very interested. Um, Lots of little bits and pieces. Marilyn's under puzzling death, so at least she's not categorised under murder. Uh, mostly because that's been debunked by now. But yes, this was a very interesting book. Three stars because there were little bits in it I thought were a bit... Mm, not sure about that. But it was still an alright book. I just need a drink. That's better. Right. Uh, then I had... Songs of Willow Frost by Jamie Ford. I believe this I got this years ago in the A Book of the Brew box, which I used to get. Um, I've got loads of these sorts of things that I haven't read, so I'm quite happy to have got one off the list. So this tells the story of William Eng, a Chinese-American boy. He lives at Seattle's Sacred Heart Orphanage, and he's been there for five years, um, believing that his mother had died and that's what they're all telling her they've all told him but when he goes on a trip to a movie theater with the rest of the boys from the orphanage he sees an actress on the silver screen that he's convinced is his mother because it she looks like his mother uh, so he is determined to find her and find out what's going on and he runs away um tracks her down it turns out it is his mother but there are reasons why she left him behind there are reasons why he's in the orphanage it's a really sad book actually but very 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 interesting very good i still gave it three stars because i think it was longer than it needed to be it could have been done it could have taken 100 pages out of that okay back to the ebook so next is the short story the tragedy of marsden manor by uh, agatha christie which is a poirot short story not how i say his name um he's asked by an insurance company to investigate a death before they pay out um was it natural uh, or causes or murder that's it basically and of course he gets to the bottom of it and uh yeah that's all I've got to say about that one. Well, I gave that three stars as well. Now, last book I read in October was Little Women by Louise May Alcott. I've never read this before. I'll admit I've never read it before. So when I, I saw it in a charity shop, 50p I picked it up. So I'm not going to go into it. You know it's the story of the three sisters, Meg, Joe, Amy and Beth. 
um, um, during the American Civil War and what they get up to. Now, I'll admit that the first part, I know that originally this was written as two stories. The first half and the second half. I thought that the first half is very, very preachy, very, very, oh, you must be good, you must do this, you must do this, um, you know, because, you know, you've got to be good for God, you've got to be good for your father. You know, there was no, no rebellion, not much rebellion in it, and it was all very, ugh, really. But the second half was much better, um, and maybe because it was a little while after, but the story continued. So overall, I gave it three stars. I did enjoy it, but I don't think I, it's something I would read again to be honest. I don't know. What, again, it's one of those books like Alice in Wonderland. I wonder why everybody's so mad about it, but that's just me. Again, it may be a, you know, a, a location thing, because obviously this is America and I'm British and I, I don't get it. You know, we're coming at this, this sort of coming in age story. And that all the religion as well puts me off. You know, I don't mind religious stories. I've read several Christian books in the past. Um, but it's all, it's very, very up in your face at the, at the beginning, at the beginning of this book. But the second half was much better. The second half definitely remain, remain, blah, 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 redeemed it. Now, I would read some of the following volumes, like Joe's Boys and Little Men and so on, if I find them. But I'm not going to go out of my way to search for them. So those are all the books I read in October. Now, November, I've read lots and lots of those Agatha Christie short stories. So let me know if you want me to talk about them or not. Or I'll just say I read this many out of Christie short stories. Uh, because I'm trying to finish the um, thing it came in. Uh, that's it. So yeah, I'm still buying books faster than I can read them, but hey, it doesn't matter, does it? We just love books, don't we? That's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this very quick overview of all the books I read in October, and I'll see you in December when we will do November's book, and of course Vlogmas!